CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. There are two people in custody tonight after Saanich police busted a marijuana grow operation. The emergency response team was called in at about 12.30 to a home in the 3200 block of Alder Street. Police raided the house and inside they say they found 300 marijuana plants and hydroponic growing equipment. Investigators say the pot plants were growing in the basement. Uh, I don't have any information about uh, the occupants of the house other than say that there are two people in custody uh, at this point in time. There's also nothing to indicate that there's any children or anything like that in the residence either. In a short time before this raid was actually executed, uh, two males were taken into custody over in the Gordon Head area on Shelburne Street. Again, that was done by the uh, emergency response team personnel. Two were taken into custody safely. There was no injuries, uh, and uh, they, they remain in our custody at uh, San Jose Police Department headquarters. Police will not say if the two men arrested earlier today are linked to the grow up in Saanich. The raid this afternoon was the culmination of a three-month drug investigation. That cargo ship that took a pounding in rough seas off northern Vancouver Island last week, sustaining a lot of damage from a massive rogue wave, is now being offloaded at Ogden Point in Victoria, and it's getting a lot of attention. A C-SPAN barge was brought in this morning with a massive crane to remove the raw logs from the deck of the dry beam. The ship's crew looked on as the crane used a giant grappling hook to pluck the logs from the vessel and load them onto the barge. Crew members weren't the only looky-loos at the dock. The damaged ship attracted quite a crowd. If you look at the steel stanchions on each side, uh, the weight of that water that came on board that ship was pretty heavy. Can you imagine being uh, on the ship when that wave hit? No, I can't. It must have been something else. The ship ran into storm force winds and 10 meter swells. That's about the size of a three story building Thursday night. A rogue wave hit the ship, sending some of the cargo overboard and severely damaging the steel timber beams that are used to hold the cargo up on the top side of the deck. The ship's expected to sail home to Longview, Washington for repair, reload, and take another run at the Pacific for a crossing to Japan. Well, the first time Victoria City Councillor is using the A word right now, raising the question of amalgamation. It's a hot topic for voters and people around the capital region, a potentially poisoned pill for politicians. But amalgamation has been put on the table for discussion by Councillor Shelley Gudgeon. She's not afraid to talk about it and says she's surprised that after the municipal elections in November, the topic all but disappeared. I just found it interesting um, after Christmas when the Times colonists did their mayor's priorities and on Twitter uh, there was a feed and it was mentioned that not one mayor had mentioned amalgamation in their priorities for the next three years. So uh, the Twitter conversation turned into a real conversation and we met, I met with the people and we've collaborated and worked together to formulate a, a conversation tonight so we can then look at the issue at all angles. The Victoria Councillor hosts a public forum tonight to discuss the amalgamation issue. The event is called the Greater Victoria Amalgamation Conversation. It'll address how everyone can work more effectively as a region. The goal is to collect ideas from people in each municipality. I think that one of the most important things is, is that we have a diversity of voices and that all voices can be heard. Um, I've found the, the, the discussion to this point to be very polarized and I think to really create something that will move along, we need to engage and encourage all of our residents to come out and, and, and uh, voice their opinion on what, what their fears are and what their hopes are. A lot of people think amalgamation is a good idea. Many do not. Organizers expect more than 200 people to attend the meeting tonight. It's at the S.J. Willis School from 7 till 9. All of the ideas uh, generated in the discussion tonight will be documented and posted online at victoriawave.ca. Well, we now know what might happen to a parcel of land in central Saanich. The Sayout First Nation unveiled its plans last night for a massive shopping center proposal near the Pat Bay Highway and Mount Newton Crossroad, but there are still no specifics in the plan. It was a packed house at Central Saanich Council last night as people gathered to hear the plans for development called Jeskin Town Center. The Sayout First Nation is working with the Property Development Group to transform the land just off the Pat Bay Highway into a 650,000 square foot shopping destination. The project, uh, as we envision it right now, will consist of uh, two to three large, uh, form large retailers, uh, four to five sort of mid-box retailers, and obviously a, a number of uh, opportunities for uh, uh, restaurants and, and smaller users, including, including several opportunities for uh, local businesses to... Uh, either relocate or, uh, or open up uh, additional locations on the site. It would create uh, a lot of jobs, which my people need at this time. The uh, 
the tax revenues would give our community the uh, money to to put in programs and um, carry out the uh, the needs of the people. The developer would not name any specific stores to go into Jeskin Place. There's speculation that it may be a Costco. One of the big issues right now is access to the site off the highway. The development is being met with some opposition. The Saanich Peninsula business community is divided on the plan. We go to a lot of um, effort to make sure that the lines that we have and the things that we do are really special and individual. And so I don't think it's competition. I think it's sort of a fun way to get people into Sydney and get people shopping. Not a fan of a big box uh, in the neighbourhood. You know, Sydney's sort of famous for its independent businesses. And uh, so it's a good feel out here. And, uh, you know, having said that as well, a bit of competition is uh, in that magnitude, I don't think is a very good thing for us. The developer says Jeskin Place would employ about 500 people during construction and between 1 to 2,000 once complete. The goal would be to begin construction by the end of this year with a target to be completed by the end of next year. Saanich Council meantime has given its approval to the redesign of the Craig Flower Bridge. It'll be twice the size of the existing crossing and there will be three lanes. There will be public meetings held later this month to outline the plan in further detail along with the six-month closure which will be necessary to build the new bridge. Well, a group of Vancouver Island students is celebrating after cashing in on some top scores. Now another 5,000. Uh, Big check presentation today for students at Claremont Secondary School given a $500 check from Camosun College. Last September, Camosun held an online trivia contest called Chatter High, where students were rewarded for answering questions correctly. Those with the top scores got a cash bonus. But we came up with the concept that schools can earn by students learning. Uh, so what Chatter High is, is uh, it, it's a website that students, parents and teachers can register on, do a daily multiple choice uh, 10 question quiz uh, and earn points. And the quiz questions are provided by our question providers like Camosun College, uh, post-secondary institutions, anybody that has information like an employer that's beneficial for this audience. I think it's a great idea. It's a good way for other schools, or uh, well, all schools, kind of compete against each other in a way that's going to help each school individually. Um, we did a good job and helps us get money towards whatever we need funding with in our school. Lermont, by the way, took third place in the Camosun College sponsored Chatter High competition. The school says it's going to use the money for a second water filtration system to cut down on the use of bottled water at school. Arts and culture groups are feeling the financial pinch too, and in Nanaimo, the city is dipping into its reserve funds to help out. The Nanaimo Council has agreed to give the Port Theatre nearly $80,000 to dig it out of its deficit. 2011 was a rough year for the theatre, and it ended with an operating deficit of $114,000. After a lot of discussion, Nanaimo's mayor and council decided the show must go on, so they have agreed to transfer $74,500 from the city's capital reserves into the theatre's operating account. The big question, of course, we want to work with is this a one-time issue, uh, which is what I think Council expects, um, and we have talked to them at length about uh, their plans for 2013, the rest of 2012 and th 2013, and I, we're confident that they, uh, they're going to be able to make some changes necessary to uh, bring in the black. Both Council and the Theatre agree that the bailout is a one-act play only, and uh, plans need to be made now to ensure that that deficit is prevented in future years. It's a volatile market, as we know, in, in, in many industries. So not unlike any other industry, we suffered a year that wasn't our banner year, wasn't our best year. But we're very excited about our current season, and we're looking so far in the 2011-12 season, we've already had two sold-out shows, and sales are meeting projections. So uh, we're optimistic about the future. The theatre says much of the deficit came from low ticket sales and a decline in event bookings by arts groups. Many had their government and other gaming grants cut over the past few years, and the Port Theatre felt the trickle-down effect of those cutbacks. The Hospital Employees Union says one of its members has been suspended from her job without pay after speaking publicly about the declining state of seniors' care on the island. The woman is a licensed practical nurse at Stanford Place in Parksville and an officer with the local HEU executive. After speaking on behalf of the union at a public meeting in Parksville on the state of seniors care, she was suspended without pay for six days. She had addressed how staffing shortages and high turnover rates were affecting care or for the facility at the facility where she works. The union is furious at the suspension and says it amounts to the intimidation of health care workers. 
Well, what's uh, really upsetting about this is uh, is that uh, there's a worker who feels very strongly around seniors' care in uh, at her workplace and as well in her community, and she's been um, she's been taken to task for speaking out about that, and we find that's quite outrageous and uh, view it as a form of intimidation that this employer has taken against the workers. Stanford Place is a privately owned and operated facility that gets the bulk of its funding from the Vancouver Island Health Authority. Administrators at Stanford Place did not return our calls for comment. BC's Chief Inspector of Mines has released his final report into the blasting accident that happened last fall at a Shawnigan Lake gravel company. The explosion happened in September 2011, injuring three workers. On the day of the blast, Mid-Island Aggregate Limited was handed a three-month suspension. That remains in effect until the blaster rewrites the blasting exam. One woman lost part of her arm in the explosion. Another suffered a serious head injury. The RCMP is conducting a separate investigation into the blast.